Hi y'all, let's talk a little bit about the uh, whistle blower thing. So as you may have noticed, there's new talk about impeachment and there are polls that, that are showing that Americans have serious concerns about the president's phone call with the Ukrainian president. It's interesting that if you go back a few months, they had very serious concerns about the Mueller thing, the Russia thing, but you know, these concerns, uh, they start off very serious and they tend to evaporate once, you know, the little facts come out and, and the Democrats have to stumble onto the next thing, like, you know, I don't know, a bar crawl or something. No, oh, I'm out of booze here. I got to go down to the next one. What's, oh, you're going to let me in. And that's really, actually, Nancy Pelosi sounds a lot like that when she talks, now that I think about it. But anyway, so today the, uh, the talk is about how there's concerns, renewed concerns, about the whistleblower's safety. Now, mind you, these are the same people who equate violence and speech. So, you know, they're concerned about the safety. Not in the safety like working for the Clintons kind of safety, but, you know, safety like as in, Rude words might be said. Uh, the person's not in any danger. Trump's not going to have him, like, off or her off. I don't know who it is. Uh, but this is all very interesting. I've watched, uh, I don't know, dozens of, of interviews with various uh, officials and people surrounding the president who were uh, involved in this matter. And I can't help but notice that they, they, don't get man they don't manage to get, like, uh, I don't know, three, four, five words out before the host is like, No! I want to talk about this! They're like Oprah. We need to talk about the thing that's of concern to me at the moment, and they don't want to hear anything that's contrary to that. And I've watched a lot of uh, really embarrassing moments for journalists in, in, these, uh, in this, this wise. And one of the, the difficulties of it is, is that Rudy Giuliani has the receipts. And uh, it's really unfortunate for them that he does have the receipts, but he's like, oh, but looky here, I've got these here affidavits from Ukrainian courts. Uh, I had them on the web for six months, you guys want to ignore them. And, of course, the, the host will dutifully say, oh, no, 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 we're aware of them. We don't want to ignore them. But moving on past that, I'm like, no, 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 we really need to talk about this. And so there was a, one on, I think, Face the Nation. And it was, uh, he was, I've got these here affidavits. And if you go look at the, the, uh, the prosecutor general, the general prosecutor, where the hell they call it in Ukraine, uh, who Biden was allegedly pressuring the president to get rid of, uh, and the Face of the Nation host, hostess lady says, hey, uh, no, 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 we went to Ukraine and we talked to him. And so she, she keeps shouting Rudy Giuliani down, shouting him down, shouting him down. And finally she's like, we've got the clip, roll it. So the clip rolls and talking about this guy. And he's like, well, it's not my jurisdiction, but I don't know anything about a Ukrainian law that's been violated. And after it's finished, uh, Giuliani's like, well, you know, that's pretty embarrassing for you. That's not the right guy. Uh, the guy I'm talking about is the guy before him. This is the guy who... Uh, took his position after the corrupt deal was done. This is the one who was fired for corruption. And uh, uh, they're like, well, the previous one, the first one was corrupt. He's like, he's a very poor, corrupt guy uh, because he's literally very poor, whereas this guy, who you're just talking to, drives around in his own Bentley. So, you know, a little credibility issue there. But uh, I've got these affidavits from the first prosecutor, who that wasn't, and uh, several other people who that wasn't, who say that, yes, this happened, and then after... The, uh, the phone call with Biden in which he allegedly said, you know, if you don't get rid of this prosecutor who's investigating my son, I'm not giving you this billion dollars or whatever it is. Uh, Hunter Biden, they, they went into the next, another prosecutor's office a couple days after that to apologize for that whole incident. He goes, and I've got affidavits, you know, signed, sealed, sworn, delivered. And uh, then, of course, the narrative turns to, well, why would the president ask you, Rudy Giuliani, instead of his his State Department, his Defense Department, his ambassadors, and I don't know, the United Nations, and Hedwig, and everybody. And why, why, you of all people, Rudy Giuliani, what is the president trying to do by circumventing the established way things are done? <coughs> and he's like, well, I'm his lawyer. The answer here is quite simple. Uh, Trump likes people who are loyal and people who, uh, <coughs> you know, don't betray him. It's really simple. Obviously, he's not going to get that with the White House bureaucrats, which is why the whistleblower complaint is an issue. Incidentally, on that complaint, the person who is filing the complaint has no knowledge of any of the facts alleged in the complaint, and the media will say, yes, but it's been corroborated. Yes, there was a phone call. Trump is the president. There is this other country called Ukraine, which has a president, and Trump talked to that president. They used a phone to do it. Uh, you know, there are some things, that this, the United States exists, phones exist, you know, White House officials exist. There are things in there that are true, but there are also things in there that are false. And they want to, like, just, just uh, I don't know, skate right past the false things, like uh, mixed, uh, mixing up of names, who was president when, 
mixing up of dates that uh, allegedly happened in this this case when the dates are out of order. Just, I mean, there, there are things in there that, like, if you had a direct witness, which is to say someone who has allegedly direct knowledge, you could ask them, but this guy you can't ask. You, the most he can say is, well, I heard from someone that this happened, and I just worked that down. So, ta-da! And interestingly enough, up until, like, you know, a half a minute before this was filed, you couldn't accept hearsay testimony and be a whistleblower. It had to be direct knowledge. But that was changed, and then 35 seconds later, this report gets filed. Who? Who knew? This isn't a shake-up or any, a shakedown or anything. It's not political, even though they found bias on the part, but the, some parts of the story were corroborated. It's, no, 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 it's all above board. It, it's not really the deep state or anything, to use that phrase. But anyway, so that going through with Giuliani and the lies about him, and, and he's like, yeah, I got the receipts. Here are the text messages when the State Department asked me to do this. Uh, so, of course I'm going to do it. It's going to help my client. My job is to help my client. And then... Uh, Stephanopoulos, or whatever his name is, he used to work for Bill Clinton, I was like, well, why didn't you go to China and do this? He says, well, if I'd gone to China and done that, then it really would look like I was going after Biden, which I'm not. I'm going after uh, in interference in the 2016 election, which happened to lead me to Ukraine, which happened to have in turn led me to this conversation with Joe Biden, who is not my target. My object is to address these issues in relation to my client in the 2016 campaign. I don't have any interest in China. It has nothing to do with this. So go talk to other people. And all the questions about, you know, all of his ambassadors and all of his people, you know, all the king's men and all the king's bitches, essentially. And the, the, the point that, that the reporters don't seem to get is there's exactly one executive, chief executive in this country, and it is the president. It's not any of his subordinates. They don't dictate to him what policy is and how he should go about doing these things. He tells them how it will be done. And it will be done in whatever way the president prefers. How a president prefers to do his foreign policy is his business. Uh, it is not new, it is not novel, it is not a Rudy Giuliani or Trump innovation for a president to send a trusted confidant in his stead to talk to people in foreign countries rather than his official ambassadors or any other government official. The president can send whoever he wants. Uh, he, he, you know, if it works for him, then fine. It works for him so long as it's legal, and it is perfectly legal. As the, uh, the readout shows, there was none of the alleged quid pro quo, very much of the stuff that was alleged to uh, be in there wasn't, but whatever. It is the president's prerogative to conduct foreign policy as he sees fit. And this notion that it's wrong to inquire about the Joe Biden thing because Joe Biden is, as they say, a political rival, which is not true. Joe Biden is not a candidate for any office. Joe Biden is a candidate to be a candidate for a future office. He's not a rival of the president. He's a rival of Democrats at the moment. But even if he were a presidential rival uh, you know, in an election year, I don't understand what the problem is when a president is presented with information that indicates that a previous office holder has potentially violated the law of uh, our country or another country in his, in his dealings with another country to say to that other country, hey, can you look into this? He's not saying, you know, can you cook the books, as uh, Adam Schiff is trying to say. I'm only going to repeat this seven times. I want you to dig up dirt. He says, I just want you to look into this. Do me a favor. Maybe it pans out. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, I don't see, and no one else sees a problem with this, by the way, which is why all the investigations of Trump have been going on without any complaints in the media of, oh, my God, this is improper because he's a president. You can't investigate a president. Of course you can investigate a president. You can investigate anyone who's alleged to, uh, to have engaged in wrongdoing. The problem is, uh, where the question is, did the person engage in any, any wrongdoing? Yay or nay? You find that out by doing investigations. Now, I think the investigations of the president were on trumped-up terms. <laughs> no pun intended. It's complete bullshit. It was very obvious that the, there was no collusion between tr the Trump campaign and Russia, but whatever. The Democrats want to flay themselves alive, let them do it. Uh, as I mentioned, they are staggering drunk down, I don't know, someplace in New Orleans where they have lots of alcohol. The French Quarter, maybe. I don't know. I've never been there. Uh, but, you know, they're going from bar to bar to bar and getting, uh, you know, more and more reckless as they go. This time, uh, Pelosi, well, the last time they did this too, but this time it was just very rapid. Coming out before they'd seen any evidence, all they'd heard was uh, innuendo, hadn't read anything, hadn't seen the transcript, and then uh, they're kind of committed to this, this uh, asinine course of conduct right now, which I very much welcome them to engage in because it's not going to end well for them. And, of course, because it's a super serious subject, they naturally did the, uh, the most important thing that is really ever on the legislative agenda, which uh, you can tell this by looking at how Parliament uh, behaved 
in the UK when they realized it's a very pressing Brexit issue. We need to rise for a summer vacation. So naturally, that's what the uh, the House and the Senate have done. They've said, oh my God, this is super important. We need two weeks off because we can't stand that the president obviously is betraying the country. And the best way we can address this is by going on vacation uh, because, you know, uh, Pelosi's mansion is not going to sit there and enjoy itself now, is it? So that's uh, that's this week in, in ludicrousy. Uh, I don't really know where it's going to go. I was right on the impeachment thing on the Mueller bit. Uh, I did not anticipate that the Democrats were really, really had this kind of a hard on for self-inflicted wounds, but apparently they do. Uh, so I very much encourage them to, to do this because it will, uh, it will surely mean that come the next election cycle, there's going to be a self-inflicted election night massacre of the Democrat Party as it loses bigly. And I look forward to that because it'll be very interesting. All right, have a great day.